So welcome back to the Mac part. Now I'm going to be telling you how you can actually use generics uh, in your functions. Then in the next part, I'm going to be teaching you how to use generics in your classes. Uh, and then finally, how to use generics uh, in extensions. I believe that is a feature that Swift has added. Uh, you can now use generics with functions. Uh, OK, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, as you can see, I have a playground here in which I have three functions, which are uh, function equal integer, which takes a as an integer and b as an integer and returns a boolean, and it just returns a is equal to b. Uh, and same thing for equal str, meaning string, and also equal double. Uh, so those are quite generic functions. As you can see, they just say a is equal to b inside of them, but they take different types of parameters. Uh, equal int takes two ints, uh, equal str takes two strings, and equal double takes two doubles. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it just, it just gets repetitive. Imagine if there are 50 or 60 types. You don't want to have to make 50 to 60 functions for those 50 to 60 types. Uh, and so, instead of creating functions for all those uh, tediously, all you do is this. Now this uh, line over here, this is the classic example of a generic function. This is the most like simple explanation you could possibly find for a generic function. Uh, what this is, is it, it says function equal it takes, and then as you can see, there's this new thing that you've never seen before. Uh, instead of taking parameters in uh, parentheses, we're taking them in angular brackets. Uh, and so we're saying t, uh, and then a colon, uh, and then equatable. Meaning, t has to be or inherit from equatable. Okay, then what we're doing is, you see, inside of these brackets where we usually put our parameters, we're just saying we're doing the same parameters except for specifying uh, in, in string or double, we're only saying t. So whatever they choose as t is inputted here. That's it. It's that simple. And then we just return a, return a boolean and we just say a is equal to b. That's it. It's that simple. Okay, so now let's just try this out, uh, and let's say equal int um, 5 and 6. As you can see, this gives us false. If we say 5 and 5, it gives us true. Now we could continue like that. Uh, but let's try giving it um, a string hi and hello. As you can see, it gives us an error that we were expecting an integer, but you gave us a string. And so, there's really nothing we can do about that now. However, let's try this. Let's say we were to run equals string, and we were to say, hi, hello. Right? It says false, because they're not the same if I say hi, or actually, hello, hello. As you can see, it says true. Okay, now let's try the double. So if we say equal double, and if we give it 5.67, and 5.66 false if we give it 6.66 if we give it uh, 7 and now let's finally make these equal 7.77 and 7.77 and as you can see it gives us a true however again that's very tedious for all these different types of types Literally. Uh, okay, so then we use the generic equal function. Now this takes uh, two equatable parameters, and so I believe we could actually, yeah, let's just test this out. So if we give it 5 and 6, uh, and it passes the first test, it gives us false. If we give it 5 and 5, it gives us true. Perfect. Now if we give it 5 and high, false. As you can see, it took two different types of parameters. They just have to be inheriting from equatable. And as you can see, it gave us false. If I do hello and hi, it also gives us false. If I say hi and hello, I mean hi and hi, it gives us true. Now again, let's see what happens when we give it 9.45 and 4.53. False, however, let's just set this to 5.32 and 5.321. False still and 5.32, 5.32, it gives us true. Perfect. So as you can see, our generic equal function works perfectly. And we could theoretically really use this for any other type. Uh, let me just think of one off the top of my head. Actually, I can't think of any right now. But this would work for any equatable type. Literally any. 
Okay, now let's think of some more practical examples. Because, I mean, there is already an equals operator that's generic in Swift, and so you don't really need a function to do your equals for you. And so, here's one a little bit more practical example. Now, what this example does is it's actually an array randomizer. So, essentially, what'll happen is you give it an array containing any types, and it'll completely randomize the array. Okay, uh, now... The reason I'm saying this is only a bit more practical is because you could just say type of generic array instead of using a T here, but it still works. And so essentially what we're doing here is here we're not even checking if T is equatable because we're just randomizing it. So what we're just doing is we're just taking T uh, in our angular brackets, we're saying var array uh, in our parameters is equal to array of T, uh, and we are also returning an array of T uh, from, uh, from this function. Okay, then inside of here we just have uh, a generic, um, uh, really just normal uh, array randomizing logic. Uh, there will be a Wikipedia link uh, to this in the description, and I think I've already talked about this in a video before. If I have not, then I will make a video on this, uh, probably with my quick sort video, which I'll be talking about next. Uh, and so, yeah, this is a bit more practical example than uh, the one on the top equals. Uh, however, there is one more, even more practical example, which is a quicksort algorithm. Now, you might be wondering, why would we need really any sort of generics for quicksort? All it does, it takes an array of integers and it sorts them. Well, that's exactly, you just said the answer itself. It's only sorting arrays of integers. We want it to sort arrays of floats and decimal, and uh, double, sorry, strings, booleans, etc. Actually, booleans not really strings, uh, which I'll explain in a while how you can actually compare strings, but uh, yeah, I'll tell you in a while. Uh, okay, so now let's get started uh, with a simple example. Let's say we were to take, um, actually let, just because, uh, a is equal to, now let's just fill this up with completely random integers. Um, Okay, now let's run our array randomizing logic on a new random array, which we call array randomize, and we give it A. Uh, and as you can see, it gives us an, a totally randomized array over here. Uh, as you can see, this is our original array, and this is our randomized array. Now, if I were to just change uh, a, a, a character in the playground and put it back, it causes it to rerun, and as you can see, it's uh, been refreshed again. Uh, now, if I were to just do this, as you can see, it shuffles once more. And now it's in a completely different order. And that's essentially how our array randomize works. Now, let's do this. Let's run quick sort on our randomized array. Um, and also, let's run quick sort on our uh, array that we already had. And as you can see, it quick sorts these integers for us. And also the randomized array. Okay, now let's actually try creating an array of, let's say, decimals and integers. Uh, and as you can see, it is able to sort them and randomize them using generics. Okay, now let's try something even harder. Let's try something, actually not harder really, but uh, let's try this. Uh, a a uh, list of random um, decimals. I don't know exactly know how to randomize this properly, but um, let's just say we were to do this um, and a bit of this. Okay, now this is going to completely randomize them, and as you can see, quick sort is able to sort these numbers from least to greatest. And, okay, so that's that. Now, there's something really interesting about the uh, about something that Apple just uh, released as a new feature in Swift, uh, which is, now, if you were to take something like hi and say it's greater than hello, it would give you true, because it's saying that in alphabetical order, hi would come after hello. It's greater than, it scores greater than hello. And if we were to say less than... It says, of course, false, and if we were to say equal to, false. Okay, so now, 
get out of the way. As you can see, I've prepared this little example for you, uh, which uh, just takes um, uh, a letters array in which we have letters A to Z. Uh, it randomizes them, then quick sorts both the randomized array and the non uh, the non randomized array, the one that's already in order, which doesn't really make sense, but it works still. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is let's say we do something like, let's make this a bit harder. Let's say we do A3, uh, A1, and A2. This should theoretically uh, sort this in the correct order. Um, oh yeah, forgot the comma. So it should say, oh yes, it did. A1, A2, A3, then the rest of the letters. Uh, and so that was a quick example of the quicksort algorithm using generics in Swift 2 specifically. Uh, and so that was it for this tutorial. Now in the next part, just quickly, uh, let me uh, tell you some extra information. All the source code will be available in the description on a GitHub repository. That's first of all. Next, if you have any questions, you can just leave them down in the comments or email me at tajimani.gmail.com uh, and that will be in the description as well or contact me at my Twitter handle at tajimani. Uh, and also, in the next part of this video, we're going to be going over how you can use generics in, with classes. Uh, and so, that was actually it for this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like uh, and subscribe to my uh, channel if you if you like my content or, or you want to see more of it. Uh, and that's going to be it for this tutorial. Goodbye.